In this video, I'm going to create a polyrhythm generator using MaxMSP. In fact, I'm going to use some new objects that came to MaxMSP in a recent update. The whole calculation of rhythm, timings, and subdivisions are going to be done by a single sorted wave, a phaser ramp. I will be using certain new objects like a subdiv, phase groove, and what in order to process this data to create subdivisions and eventually create some cool polyrhythms. So let's see how it's done. All right, so polyrhythms in theory are fairly simple. It's just two or more contrasting rhythms that are played at the same time. Uh, the problem is actually playing those polyrhythms, but that's not what we are going to do, is it? We are going to generate those polyrhythms. So what do I need to generate these polyrhythms? What kind of information do I need? Well, I need the length of a single measure, uh, let's say in BPM. I need to be able to divide divide the measure into, well, subdivisions, right? And ideally, it's n amount of subdivisions, so I can divide it into three or four, and then I can put multiple instances of these subdivisions against each other to have things like two against three, five against seven, 11 against 12 against four, and cool things like that. And of course, at the end, I need to play the subdivisions. And I can add an optional step, you know, like uh, now it's really becoming like a video game, but I can also try to generate a different set of subdivisions on each measure. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, I need a way of keeping track of time. And for this, well, I'm going to use an audio signal. I'm going to use a phaser to keep track of time. And I'm going to try and uh, subdivide that phaser. So I need an audio context, I need to turn audio on. So I'm going to create an easy deck. I know eventually I'll, I will have some audio output. So I might as well just create live.gain and connect it here. But the phaser object I'm going to create will not connect to this live.gain because it will not probably make any sounds because it will have a frequency of one, right? So right now this phaser is playing, if I plug it into there, I will not hear anything. But if I use live.scope tilde to visualize the information coming out of here, you'll see that it's a ramp going from zero to one, and each cycle is one second long because this frequency, well, it's one. But I don't want to think of things in terms of frequencies. I want to be able to have an integer number box that can be my BPM. And I want this to translate into the frequency of my phaser. And to convert BPM into frequency, I need to divide the BPM by 60. Uh, this dot, of course, is very important. That's the, uh, the decimal dot. So the result is a float number. Right? I can even show it like this. All right, so if I make it faster, 100 BPM, well, the frequency of that is actually 1.667 or probably 1.6666 something, but it's kind of truncated here. Or I can have it much slower, 40 BPM. Each measure is 40, right? And this is going to be my measure. I'm going to work with this. This will be my way of timekeeping. So I already have the length of a single measure in BPM, which is really nice, going pretty fast here. Now, how do I divide this measure into subdivisions though? Well, there is a new object in the relatively recent max update 8.3, I believe, that's called subdiv. And subdiv is going to give you the integer subdivision of a phaser. And it is, a, it is an incredibly cool object, right? You, you should check out the help file to see the probabilities, the patterns, how those are combined, but I'm going to just focus on a single argument, the subdivision of an incoming phaser. And let's say I want to have uh, subdivisions of three. So I want to divide this measure into three. If I create another live.scope, get the result of subdiv. Well, look at this. Now each phaser ramp is divided into three. So in the time that my main phaser, my, uh, me my single measure takes to go from zero to one, well, subdiv gives me three ramps, three zeros to ones. And I can change this argument, of course, I can make it five. And look at this, it's five subdivisions, five phaser ramps, or 50, 15, or 1,500, and essentially you're just creating oscillators, which you might do if you want. But I will keep it simple, and I will just have my measure divided into three. 
I don't think we will be using them, but the other outlets of subdiv is also really cool. Uh, the second outlet is the step number and signal. So if I create a number tilde object, you can see that it counts uh, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So it knows which subdivision it is, which you might use to create more complicated algorithms. And the third outlet does the same, but it sends out a good old integer number instead of an audio signal. But again, that's not very relevant here. Okay, so I divided the measure into n subdivisions, three subdivisions in this case, but how do I play the subdivisions? So there are multiple ways, there are multiple ways of doing this, right? I can try to uh, detect zero crossings in the signal and trigger a button bang and that can maybe trigger an audio sample. But again, there is a new object that makes things either easier or more interesting and that object is phase groove. Again, this came with the new max 8.8.3 .8 update so it's a relatively new object and you might notice the groove here and you might think of ah there is the groove object right the variable rate looping sample playback i can play back from an audio buffer using groove well phase groove makes that easier or it makes it possible to play through uh, a buffer using phaser ramps so to explain this, let's first try to set up Groove. So to work with Groove, I need an audio buffer, right? So I'm going to create a buffer. So there is a, there is a, some, some, some of the computer memory is used to store audio samples and I'm going to name this buffer beat because I'm not feeling particularly creative right now. And I'm going to visualize the contents of this buffer by using waveform tilde. And I'm going to give it the attribute buffer name well, what is the name of my buffer? It's beat, isn't it? So buffer name beats. All right, and right now this buffer is of course empty, but I can go to my audio tab and let's see if we have an interesting stock audio that would be cool to play. What about wipes A1? All right, here it is. So uh, I can tell Groove as a first uh, argument, the name of the buffer I wanted to play back and the name of my buffer is beat. And then I can connect this here, right? Let's uh, lower the gain a little bit. So in case I mess something up, uh, your ears do not explode. And then I need to tell Groove how fast the playback is by the means of an audio signal. So I can use a sig tilde and uh, just give it the default argument one. And there it is, it, it has played. If I want to trigger it again, I can use the message zero that will make uh, it play back from the zeroth millisecond, so from the beginning. Cool, but this is going to be really complicated. If I get this phaser and I try to get bangs out of it and I try to generate messages from that, and instead of this, I can simply use phase groove. Phase groove takes, well, a phaser, a phaser audio signal as the input, and when connected to a groove, it will make groove play its related buffer at the rate of that phaser ramp. So if, uh, if my subdiv phaser is connected to phase groove, and if that's connected to my main groove object, well, now I'm getting playback per rep. I'm getting, well, three vibe uh, audio samples per second. Right, so I can, for example, change the BPM. Or I can change the subdivision itself from three to maybe five. So now it's really one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. All right. So there we go. We have also played the subdivisions, but of course it's really not polyrhythms right now, is it? It's more uh, single rhythms, which might be cool as well if you had some audio effects and maybe a bit of delay and uh, some cool uh, equalizer action. But to achieve polyrhythms, I can simply, well, make this completely quiet first. Come on, there we go. All right, and I can just simply have a different subdivision. How about three against five, right? So my main measure phaser goes to a subdiv three, which also goes to phase groove, which goes to a different instance of groove that also reads from the beat buffer. And this goes into the exact same live game. And now we should hopefully, ideally, let's visualize it too, here three against five. Pretty cool. And I can take this even further by adding a third rhythm, right? So how about uh, two against three against five? 
Again, a main phaser goes into subdiv that, is, uh, that has its subdivision of two. It goes into phase groove. That goes into another instance of groove, which once again goes into our main live.gain. Now, these are some tasty polyrhythms. And you might have noticed that this also generated harmony, right? Even though this is a vibe A, so it's the note A, each instance has a different pitch. That's because by default, Groove, when it's uh, playing back uh, samples or buffers at different speeds, it also transposes the playback by its nature. So if we are playing something twice the speed, well, the pitch is doubled or uh, the frequency is tripled. And because these are integer, value so it's a uh, two three five and it's never three point two or five point seven well we are getting the harmonic series if we just uh, multiply frequency by one and two and three and four and five we would have uh, the overtones of that frequency which generates something harmonic and the first few harmonics create the major chord so we are hearing a nice major chord polyrhythm Of course, if I do not want this for whatever reason, I can uh, right-click the inlet of groove, I can click on time stretch, I can connect the outlet of that to each groove. This turns down for now, and I can turn on time stretch, which disables pitch shifting if when we are uh, time stretching or playing the buffer at different speeds. I don't know about you, but I prefer the harmonic version. Uh, and maybe I can also, let's see, just have a version where it's just uh, it's just one. It's not there. There are no subdivisions. My main measure phaser goes into phase groove. That goes into groove, and that goes into live.gate. So at the beginning of each measure, I also have the OG vibes uh, A1 sample. Ah, beautiful. Okay, now let's let's do the optional part. Let's generate a different set of subdivisions on each measure. And how do we do that? Hmm. Well, I need a way to first of all uh, trigger an event at the beginning of each measure, right? And here I'm going to go out of the uh, audio realm, and I I actually want to trigger a bang. I want to have a button that will uh, light up and send the bang message at the beginning of each measure. And guess what? Once again, there is a new object, a new MSP object that facilitates, facilitates this. Uh, and that's called, well, it's not called randomly matching on the keyboard, but it's called what tilde, which is going to generate impulses for a list of audio values. And again, what is an incredibly cool object. If you go into the help file, look at all the possibilities, there are really cool things. But I'm just going to use its default version where if it receives a phaser ramp, and if I create a live that's scope to visualize what's going on, well, it just sends an impulse, a single sample with the value of one at the beginning of each ramp when this uh, phaser value is exactly at zero, which means I'm getting a steady supply of impulses, right? So I can make it so on each impulse, I get a new value, a random value, let's say between two and seven, for each of my subdivisions, so I have new polyrhythms. Well, I can simply use edge tilde to uh, take this impulse and generate a bank. Edge is really useful. It just uh, detects zero crossings, I believe. So if it receives this impulse, if it sees that the samples are going from zero to something else, it sends out a good old bank from its first outlet. So let's use this to trigger something. Right, I'm going to just, uh, no, I'm actually going to delete this. I have my bank, so what do I need? I need a random value between, what did I say, two and seven. Now, random will always generate random values between zero and uh, up to, but not including its upper limit. So let's do um, random six, which will give me random values between zero and five, and then I can add two to that. So I'm going to have a random value between two and, seven, I hope. Yep, seven, seven, a lot of sevens, three, five. All right, cool. And of course, I need two more instances of this because I need uh, three random values, one for each subdivision. 
one for each voice of my polarism. All right, there we go. And uh, it's actually incredibly easy to change these subdivisions. So instead of change, typing the argument each time, like I have been doing, I can just send these integer number values into its first inlet and the subdivisions are going to change according to that. So let's uh, clean this up a tiny bit. Let's see. So maybe I can do it like this. Uh, I'm getting my random values like this, which generates a bank, which is going to give me random values for each of my subdivisions. There we go. And of course, we have our main phase group that does not have a subdivision to signal the beginning of each measure. Okay, let's see how this sounds. Now, now that's really cool. You can really play around with this, right? Uh, right now I'm just using very simple random process to generate subdivisions, but maybe this could be like a step sequencer that shifts between different predetermined polyrhythmic structures. You can maybe use another subdiv below the subdiv to further subdivide the subdivisions, or you can really try to look into the help file of subdiv and explore probabilities and patterns to generate more complex rhythms within the subdivisions. In any case, uh, I hope you have a lot of fun with it. I hope you create something really cool with it. And thank you for watching this video.